If you want extreme happiness as a purebred entrepreneur, it's all about employees mm -hmm. and incentivizing the fuck out of them. Nice. Because you're an artist. And as an artist, you want to write your song. We need to understand that entrepreneurs are artists. You want, Pablo Picasso didn't want to co-paint. You got your perspective. I just want to be happy. Don't you want to be happy? What's up, guys? Back to biz on the Born and Made podcast. I am fucking fired up because I've got a guest on the show today that honestly is fucking blowing up my world. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, thank you for Thanks fucking for being me. on the show. Thanks, bro. Um, typically, the way this show goes is I try, I pose the question whether or not you think you got to where you are today because you were born with an innate ability to do it or you were built over time or made Both. over time. Let's save a lot of time in this both. show forever in perpetuity. The answer is both. It's proven that it's both. Like obviously some people skew one way or the other, but we are like, like they figured out this nature nurture thing forever ago. We all keep layering on top of it. But wait, can I just say, so, so you say both. Yes. But you also say that there are a fuck ton of fake entrepreneurs. That's so right. like if it's both, you mean you have to be born with it and then you build it over time? Nope, I, I think in that example where you're going with that is entrepreneurship's cool now. Mm -hmm. uh, just like in 1978, being a rock star was cool and that's why every fucking dude wanted to have a band. How many of them became the Rolling Stones? Not a lot. That's what we're living through right now. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur right now for the first time ever. Uh, you know, not ever, but definitely in contemporary mm -hmm. pop culture and 98% of them will not be well, successful entrepreneurs. But why do you think, because I, I know what my answer is to this question and I don't typically ask the guest until the very end and I very rarely say what I think, but I am 100% convinced that you were born this way. Yes, I know but, you, but the drive that you got from the way your dad rolled since I've had you on my podcast or the fact that I couldn't speak English because I wasn't born in America and then I immigrated here, is a massive fucking variable. I think adversity definitely plays a huge role well, in let's, it. Well, let's stop right there. If you and I were the grandkids of each other mm -hmm. instead of each other, full T, everything else, we're gonna be different. Bro, you and I have real chips on our shoulder. Mm -hmm. This is where I want all these fuckers to get. Losing and shit is phenomenal. Oh yeah. Bro, that's, 100%. I don't know what to say. Exactly you and me. Yeah. Growing up in Greenwich, third generation wealthy, where you and I are different. I'm telling you right so now. So I've got different. another question for you. you. Know the level of, do you know the level of disrespect you and I consciously and subconsciously have for third generation wealthy Greenwich? Yeah, it's bad. We don't think they can beat us. It's bad. We, it, it, forget about bad, good. Mm -hmm. Like, just let's go to raw. Mm -hmm. Let's go to like winning and losing. But you know what? The, the, Please. But, but 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 I actually don't even think it think like. I just, I, I, it's, it's interesting. I don't think about that though. I don't, I don't, it's not like I think about, like when somebody comes to the table and I'm trying to do something with somebody, I'm like actually in the middle of it right now. I'm working on a project. I got a new project that I'm working on. And there's a dude that I'm working with who I fucking love, but he can't get out of his own way. And there's a reason why. And the reason why is because Pop Dukes blesses his life. Like it, it's just, it, it, it's just, it's. Bro, if you don't think that you and I, with all our fucking talent, if Pop Stukes blessed our life, would be different, I know you know that to be true. Yeah, I get it. I okay, get it. Too. But, listen, but, but, listen. but, question is there, so, for everybody that's fucking listening, I don't think you've ever been asked this question. Okay. If you are that dude or that girl, yes. right, that has been blessed and you're fucking 25, Stop taking the you're money. 30. Stop taking Stop the money. Stop taking the money. I know you're going to say that, but is there a way? Is it, is it too late? Or can that's, you reverse that's a good that question. shit? That's a, can you reverse that's a totally it? different great question. That is a totally different question than the first one. Mm -hmm. Is it too late? <sighs> no. No, it definitely is not. I actually believe no, it is not too late. Do I believe that you're 25? Think about how devastating. Listen, by the way, I could be 100% wrong. But I'm about to deliver a sentence that is not fun to deliver because I do know that 26-year-old Sarah and Rick are on, running right now mm -hmm. on a treadmill listening to this. 
they fully know their third generation been taken care of. They know actively right now that mom and dad pay for Uber. They mm -hmm. know actively right now that the doorman building in Manhattan is paid for by mom and dad. Mm -hmm. They know everything. And now they're saying, fuck, this is a vulnerability. They believe us. They decide to cut off dollars. Mm -hmm. They do want to change. They want to be on their own two feet mm -hmm. and merit-based. Here's the problem. Yes, you can fix it. I think you start really getting results at 31, 32, 33. If you're 41 right now, I think you start really getting results at 57, 58. But don't you think that this is- It takes like, time I, I to put in the extra, I just want to finish the thought. Yeah. You're gonna have to put in the work, it's like extra. If you've been eating like shit and not going to the gym mm -hmm. for 38 and a half years like I did, mm -hmm. did it take four fucking good seven days a week eating and working out to finally form into something at least decent? Yes, it did. 100%. And if I started at 22, I'd be fucking, I'd look like you. I'm, I'm being dead serious. Mm -hmm. It's not super complicated. No, that's, and, and I, I always bring I, it back to that. Me. But, that's but it. what I would say is, is this. If you are 25, 26, 30, fucking 2, 40, and you've been living off the fucking, the, the, teat. the, 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 the teat. money tree. Yeah. I think the, the hardest part of that is actually starting, because you don't get where you got without going through the fucking shit, right? Like, unless, like from where we came from. Bro, you know what's harder than what we did? Coming from the dirt is going into the dirt when you lived in the pedestal. That's what I'm saying. So that, that's that got to be, so I, that hurts. is it reversible? I, I don't know. It's reversible if you become aware that it's your vulnerability. Mm -hmm. The reason I've had some incredible interactions in the last couple of years, I've had people call me, cry, letters, Oh my God, I have subconsciously resented myself and my parents. I'm 33 years old. I'd never heard anybody say, cut them off. First you shit on my parents for entitling me and I was like, yeah. And then in that same podcast, you later said, oh, by the way, you know how I've been shitting on your parents? Now, fuck you, stop taking the money. I'd never been in a place of accountability. I kept saying my parents fucked me up. The Upper West Side fucked me up. Harvard fucked mm -hmm. me up. Goldman Sachs fucked me up. My friends fucked me up. I never was accountable in saying, I can stop taking the money. Mm -hmm. Like, like where are we, right? This is gonna air fairly soon? Mm -hmm. Cool. Instead of having your parents pay for you to go to St. Bart's this New Year's, you could say no. Just say no. But do you have the humility? So do you think the, the what you're saying is stop taking the money Full stop. If you want to fucking put some shit on the map and you yes. want to actually feel good yes. about yourself, because you're you're lying about, you know, smiling in my Camry or fucking crying in my Ferrari. I think is as real as it gets. It's the realest thing I know. I think it's as real. And as people it that gets. don't have wealth are like Gary. That's bullshit. Only rich people talk about money not having happiness. I'm like, no, it's perspectives. All right. So uh, so so another question. You know, entrepreneur. Yeah. What the fuck does that mean? For me, the way I've always thought about it is this cool game where you live on your own two feet, it's completely merit-based, it's the closest thing to sports, and you get to do what the fuck you wanna do. However, if you suck, you die. You die. In that game, you have to go get a job, is what I mean by that. Okay. So, a ver it's the most merit-based, which is why I think it's fake entrepreneurship now, because you and I didn't grow up with this concept of raising capital. But how do you know if you're a fucking entrepreneur or not? Like, I know how I knew because I was fucking onto shit me too. from as early as me, I can remember. Me, listen, if you sold shit without knowing why the fuck you were selling it before the age of 12, it's in the mix. Okay, so if you, <laughs> if so, you have polarized this whole thing. If, if, you know, if you don't fucking listen to this guy, you're fucking hiding under a rock that you shouldn't be hiding under because you've polarized this shit in the realest way. If you are a fake entrepreneur and you fucking know it because nothing fucking works, you have zero creativity in your fucking life, what do you do? Well first, and let's talk about it, because listen, because you're so cool, which is fun, so I'm gonna assume so many cool people listen to this. Look, I'm so empathetic. I, I, listen, there's a lot of people listening right now who've never heard of me, so let me take a step back. All this energy you're feeling right now, this is not fucking Ritalin, this is not fucking Red Bull, this is deep gratitude and passion to help that I'm so grateful. I almost feel guilty of how much happiness I have because of circumstance of parenting and entrepreneurship and immigration and bad mm -hmm. school and all this stuff. Look, I'm empathetic to the kid that we just punched in the gut who knows that he has or she has entrepreneur, it's a, this skews a little bit more male, but it goes both ways, has entrepreneur in their Instagram account because that's like a good thing to say at Eugene's spot at mm -hmm. two in the morning. Like, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. You know, what do I say? It's gonna lead you down depression. 
In the same way that your parents forced you to be lawyers and doctors and engineers, and all those immigrant kids are deeply depressed at 42, the reverse is about to happen. All these kids that are using their bio and saying they're an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. but deep down know they can't do it. Mm -hmm. They need to get off that fucking drug. They have to. Self awareness. So, wait, do you so, but one Real quick, thing. I want to say one yeah. thing. Self awareness and humility and accountability are the greatest paths to happiness, and nobody wants to do that. Can I tell you what Please. I think the greatest path to happiness Please. is? Straight up. Please. Fitness and fucking wellness. I love that. I, I'll be, I'll be no, honest no, with you. That's great. I Out of that. everything in my life. So, I just, I just sold a bunch of equity in a company. Okay. And Took one of the larger checks I've ever taken in my life. Which is always a fun moment. It's a fun moment. Guess what? This was the most polar, I, this happened last week. I was sitting in my fucking car and I just, you know, I had just done this thing. And it's in your account, you like and see it? And it's in my yeah. account, but Which guess what? Which is always what? the funny part, when you see it. Nothing. Changed. Changed. I believe no, that. I, I mean, nothing, I mean nothing from, like, you I buy fucking anything. took the fucking train. I got I didn't it. buy anything. I got it. I, nothing. You know why? You're in a good space. Let me, let me say this. What would have happened 17 years ago if that check hit? Yeah, it'd be probably a That's different it. story. Let's talk about that. The reason nothing changed is you're in a fucking incredible spot right now. But can I tell you why I'm in an incredible spot? Because I wake up at five o'clock every morning, I'm in the gym at 5.15. You found your process. And that's it. You found your process. Like right? it's not about fucking, for you me, ready for, it's ready not. For this? You know why I'm in an incredible spot? Because I wake up every morning making pretend that my parents or children died at night. <laughs> No, listen, everybody has their thing. Some people are in an incredible spot because they work out. Some people because of the type of food they now eat. Mm -hmm. Other people because of a mentor. Listen, one of the things that I'm so grateful for in my life, some people are in a great spot because I fucking penetrated their dome over the last four years because they've consumed 80,000 fucking hours of my shit and I did it for them just like my mom did it for me, just like some people did it for you, the dude that fucking helped you when you were fucking growing, mm -hmm. you know, like, I love that shit. Let me just give you Please. something new. So by the way, is this motherfucker's birthday tomorrow. It's true. And um, on your show, <laughs> yes. we talked about doing something and we didn't do it until now. Oh my God, I'm so pumped. I'm gonna wear this tomorrow. <laughs> is this a medium though? I, hope, yeah. I need a medium. Of course it's yes, a medium. Yes, you're the best. I love my fucking parents, but, <laughs> yep, I remember that moment. I gotta go look back at it. I don't think we clipped it. We didn't clip it. We need to clip it, Jason. That would, Here, remind, yeah, uh, remind me, because I remember it was a huge moment. What, what was the point oh, we were I making? Said, you, you would ask me a question, and it was something about my parents, and I was like, you know, I love my fucking parents, but, because I had moved out of my parents' house at yeah, 15. Yeah. And then you were like, what was it? And I was like, I love my fucking parents, but. And you were like, <laughs> let's Stop. make t-shirts. Yeah. yeah. So you know, like everybody says that. And my big thing on that is take the butt out and whatever the fuck they did, alcoholics beat you. I mean, like there's some extreme shit. And then you got people who hate their parents on some lightweight shit. The most of the emails I get are one of the two extremes. Gary, you don't get it though. Like heinous shit that I'm, I don't, actually not even mm -hmm. gonna repeat it here. Like I'm so uncomfortable, like real gnarly shit. Mm -hmm. Or entitlement. Like it's funny to me, the person that says I hate my parents, I love my parents but they paid for everything and now I resent them at 27 because I've realized I am a zoo animal. Mm -hmm. For them, that's as real as the person that had an alcoholic parent that punched them in the face. Because mm -hmm. you both are affected. It's your yeah. reality. Who do we get to judge which one's better or worse? As a matter of fact, if you look at suicide rates, a lot more of the fucking zoo animal than the one that got punched in the face. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I think that, so I think that's everybody wants. Everybody, I, I apologize because I'm passionate about this. Everybody wants to make their thing the worst. Mm -hmm. You don't get it, I'm an immigrant. Mm -hmm. You don't get it, I'm an African American. You don't get it, I have a, a, a dad who had, was bipolar. You don't get it, I, I had cancer when I was four. I just want to tell, everybody needs more compassion. Everybody's got shit. Mm -hmm. Everybody's trying to prove which person's suppression or shit story is worse. And my whole thing is let's go reverse. Let's just acknowledge nobody's got it great and everybody's potentially got it great. The, the one question that I get asked all the time, consistently over and over again, how do you get fit? How do you work out? How do you manage, how do you balance life and fucking and business? I think that there's a very, simple answer that is really common sense that is so fucking crazy that people that people actually have the audacity a word that you've been saying a lot um to ask if you want something there's only one way in my opinion there's only one way to get it 
and you gotta fucking do it. Action. Period. Can't that's it. Can't read about push-ups. That fu that's it. Bro, you're preaching. That's it. But I think everybody who just heard that, and this mm -hmm. is where my conversation on this issue has evolved, this is why I got into judgment. Do you know why so many people that weigh 413 pounds don't go to the gym who can't afford a private trainer? They're worried about the judgment on day one. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I mean, I think you're right. I think that that's why fucking at-home fitness is taking off, right? A hundred percent, but then at, at home, but you know how many people can't be accountable to just themselves and actually need the gym environment? So what do you it's, think that is, though? Let, let, I don't, don't want to talk about that for a second. The, the, oh, my God. So this is a school. question that I fucking have for you. <laughs> Go ahead. And this is a question that I think is so fucking important. Totally unrealistic. Let's just put yourself in an unrealistic bubble for a moment. I think high school is fucking bullshit. <laughs> I just do. I Go think ahead. high school is bullshit. Go ahead. I have not applied a single thing that I fucking learned in high school to anything I do today outside of networking and socializing. Okay. That's, that, that is the one thing that I think high school. So if you were given an opportunity to change the curriculum for today's fucking human being in the high school, in high schools across the country, what would you do? I would flip the model of one curriculum for all to individual curriculums to everyone at scale. You and I would have loved high school if all of our classes were entrepreneurship, networking. Maybe. Pay no, no. Look at this. Listen. It I got a bag of tricks here. Go ahead. One, one other thing. So I was looking for shit really because I thought it would be fun to have some shit on set with you. And um, I found this in my high school diploma. You found it. And in my high school diploma, you wanna know what I found? Report card? My final report card. Let's go. Cause you know how proud I am of my shit shit. Look, just look at. Where's your, is it, you got a class rank as bad as mine? I was Dude, 243 out of 254. Look, look, at, look at my class, my class, at my absences. Holy shit. Dude, so. Excessively, ec economics 29. <laughs> yeah, but like economics sucked in the school way. I didn't, I didn't show up to this class. I just, I just never went. Like this was, Bro, so, like, so, but what, what made me think about this question and why I wanted to ask this to you was, how can I, what would change you, that? You know what's awesome, everyone, pay attention to this. They break it up into three sections. The audacity that our man Michael rolled with. In, in section one, the beginning of the year, four absents, six lates. Now let's build on that. <laughs> section two, five absents, only one more, 17 lates. <laughs> so what you see an entrepreneur here because he's evolving. He's understanding how much he can do. Third, nine absence. So he matched the first two and 25 lates. Did more than the first two combined. Obviously it gets a little warmer, a lot of the more, I understand. Yeah. I, you were a pretty boy. I know what you were doing in so, so I, but, but like what this said to me was like, yo, there is an opportunity, like there, if, I, get, I go hard and extreme on shit I love. Like, Correct. if there's something I love, I am the most Bro, extreme. If somebody, and again, back to this, by fourth grade, we, fifth grade, we know that Sally is type A, wants to be a lawyer, wants to do this, and let's give her a curriculum. If we find little Gary and little Michael, let's get them into something far more creative and entrepreneurial. Let's just hunt a little bit. I, I mean, I really want to pull, you know. I want to this, this was, I was like, you know what? I want to fucking hunt with Gary for a moment and if there's a possibility to do it. No, this is 90, it, this is not 89. I know, it's not No grippies, no grippies. But Juan Gonzalez. This was, this was. Uh, John Olerud, Gonzalez. I got a Mookie Wilson. Big shout out to Mookie Lear. Mookie Wilson was my guy. And it's also weird. As a Blue Jay, not a Met. There it is. People that you're that. a you're a you're a Jets and Yankee fan, which is a weird fucking combo. It's a weird combo, but not for some. It's a weird combo because, because most, yes. Queens That's is right. fucking Mets. But as you know, I pulled a fucking Juan Gonzalez. Did you? I literally called <laughs> the best card and fucking pulled Did it. Did you? I pulled a Juan Gonzalez. Of course, fucking he fucking rookie. pulls the best card. Bang! Literally said this was the one. <laughs> And got it, first pack. Happy Let's birthday, fucking GB. go. My guy. Thank you. Here's why. I was born in Russia. So because I was born in Russia, I didn't have my grandfather who grew up in Queens telling me I'm Mets and Jets. Not only was I born in Russia, so I have to start. My dad didn't know American sports. Mm. I'm the first, I'm the patriarch and of my family's fandom. And I grew up in Jersey, which was very split. So Jersey I, I, was very split. So that's how it happened.
By the, I, way, I've got, by the way, it sucked, because I'm an 80s baby. The Mets were much better than the Yankees in the 80s. Let me tell you the funniest fucking story Please. of all time. So my father was born in Queens. I'm, the, I'm fourth generation New York City. I am the first non-Queens kid. How are we doing on time? We got time. Um, Great, I'm actually taking a photo while you're talking. By the way, everyone's like, how do you make content? I'm like, you just make it. Like, like I'm literally taking a photo of this Juan Gonzalez card, you're gonna and I'm gonna post it on Twitter while you're talking. Make. <laughs> so. 1986, the Mets won the series. My father never missed a Mets game ever, ever, ever. We could be anywhere, and he had a little fucking radio with him. He never missed a Mets game. That's amazing. 1987, Mets were in the playoffs, and Daryl Strawberry. 87 or 88? Did they make the 87 playoffs? Are we maybe about, it was, is it against the Dodgers when Sosha hits the home run? No, it was when Daryl Strawberry. It, 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 it was in 87. Maybe it wasn't the playoffs. It was in 87. Strawberry charged the mound. Okay. I don't remember what game it was, Go but ahead. it was towards the end of the season. Strawberry charged the mound. Daryl Strawberry was my god. Yeah, I mean, he, he was, was my fuck, he was, he was my god. god. Of course. And he charged the mound, and and he's a fucking fast motherfucker, an athletic motherfucker. He got he like actually charged the mound and actually like laid some fucking punches in there. And I looked at my dad and I said, Dad, why did Daryl Strawberry just beat that guy up? And I very clearly remember my father looking over and being like, son, Daryl Strawberry is a full-on drug addict. And that wow. was it. I became a Yankee fan overnight. What? I dropped everything. I was like, a drug addict. And that was when like Dare was, yeah, that, that was, was like when fucking the, the dude, they were coming in. Bro, I've never, listen to me. I'm the byproduct of Nancy Reagan. I've never done a single drug in my life because the propaganda during that time was so intense. Oh, it was so intense. And my mom made that religion and I was a good mama's boy and like I didn't, I, I used entrepreneurship for escapism. I didn't go there and like, to this day, I'm 44, I turn 44 tomorrow, have never, I mean, sugar and coffee, but like anything, could, I've never smoked a cigarette. I've never, Dr but, uh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, yeah, I dr obviously, but by the way, that's a fun one. If my dad didn't have a liquor store, I'm convinced, I mean, I didn't have a beer until I was 21 years old. I was crazy straight-laced on complete drugs. So in high school, were you a straight-laced guy? Straight-laced, I was scared shitless of sex because of Magic Johnson. Oh, I was shit. completely convinced that if I had sex one time, you were that I would have AIDS. Wow. Yep. I was wow. super not fun or cool in that my personality, you know, I was awesome like in like my personality traits. Mm -hmm. I was addicted to the fucking game of entrepreneurship. I was a character, a class clown, popular from like my kindness, like I, I crossed over genres. Mm -hmm. I like did a lot of good things, but I was not cool because I was absolutely not a drug or sex kid. And that is the requirement of cool in mm -hmm. high school. Yeah, that is the no that is the cost of entry. I mean, I got I got when I came into high school, I was young, I was 13, and by second semester high school, 13 years old, I turned just turned 14. I was a complete animal. Yeah, no, and I like it, our it, it fucking changed overnight for me. Yeah, and then by the end of my fucking freshman year, I was selling drugs to my whole entire high school. Yeah, and it was fucking nuts. Over. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, all right, I want to quick fire some because Let's I wrote go. these questions out and I think that it's important to get them. Um, so uh, if the Jets were um, winning consistently, like had won a couple of Super Bowls in the last five years, t 10 years, would you still be on the path? Do you think, I, I believe that you would not be on the path. I believe, I believe that, that you I would believe that I would not be on the path. You would not be on the path. I believe if the Jets win a Super Bowl before I buy them, there's a chance that- You're gonna want to buy the Knicks. Yes. Yes, I believe that to be true. Wow. I dropped the Yankees and Rangers. Listen, I'm gonna post this, because I gotta find it, I gotta go to, I think I'm going to my parents this weekend, actually. My yearbook in high school has more references to the New York Rangers than the Jets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you got the scoop. I knew it. I'm about to hunt. Yeah, dude. When you, I was, you, how about this? When I was scared of sex, in high school, my great moments were just getting the girl to like me. Mm -hmm. It was the chase. 100%. But I think that's classic. I think, the, I think on, a, on a large scale, like what I say to fucking myself and everybody else, like if you don't learn to love the hard and the hurt, Ugh. you're fucked. 100%. Like if you don't actually love it, like it's, actually in- No, no, you have our, to love the process. You have to love, have to for love me, it. it's about learning to love the hard and the hurt. Like people are like, you know, I just went through this not awesome situation with, my, my, with a business and everybody's like, oh, I'm sorry. 
And I'm like, sorry. It's fucking awesome. I'm I, like, I love it. I'm I, like, sorry. I'm bro, like, I'm fucking. You know what I would have been great at? UFC. What? Because everybody loses. <laughs> I would have been a great UFC fighter. I would have loved being Just getting 24 your ass and fucking. 8. <laughs> You know, and like be at the bar and be like, yo, remember when I knocked out Tito, but remember when fucking Shane choked me the fuck out? Like, it's merit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. Um, so I thought that that, I think that that's pretty interesting. Your biggest burn in business. Can you talk about that? Well, look, I mean, I'm 44 years old tomorrow and I built one massive business for my dad and left with zero dollars. Mm -hmm. And I built another massive, massive business and I'm buying out my brother. But you must have some situations that just like fucking left a really bad taste in your mouth. I'm not I'm, talking I'm, about like business, like failing in a business. I'm talking about just like burn, partnership, anything. I'm, I'm going right to it. The family business is the best and hardest part. Everything else is kind of easy. Like I lose money all the time. Like I start divisions and new concepts and I've written, I mean I wrote a check into somebody's startup for 250, and this is all my own money. Mm -hmm. You know how much $250,000 is to me? I made 40,000, 50,000, 60,000 every year in my 20s. This is like an enormous amount of money to me still. And like the company failed within the first year. Like, like, like unlimited, I, I hire people that fail all the time. Like here's the one thing that people don't understand about being good at something, like, I'm never gonna make a business deal that puts me into death. Mm -hmm. So everything's a micro cut. There's a very big difference between breaking your arm mm -hmm. and dying in a car accident. Mm -hmm. So when people are like, what are your failures? I'm like, you mean breaking arms, but they want some sort of story where like, you, like, I, I, will, ne I will always save too much money. All right, fuck it, so we'll move yeah. on to the next one. Um, but by the way, real quick, just to add to everybody, every day, uh, uh, we got fired today from a big client for some bullshit, today. Gonna lose 1.3 million in revenue that I now have to make up for next year. I pay bills. Yeah. You know, like every day, every fucking day. <clears throat> um, so for me in business, whether I'm the CEO of the company or not, my number one hurdle is my CFO. 100%. Just number one hurdle. Yeah. So for marketers, guys like you and I, brand guys, culture guys, community guys, long game guys, what is, how do you, how do you approach your CFO with a fucking, with a... With Conviction and compassion. Missed it, it's right there. Conviction and compassion. Conviction and compassion. That's right. And, and... I'm compassionate for you, CFO, that you've found yourself in the precarious spot that you're in one of those 5% places where you're not actually the boss. And let me say that nice and slow for everybody listening because most people on the other side of this don't know this truth. Most companies are actually run by the CFO, not the CEO. 100%. I don't have a board. I'm not held to publicly traded company dynamics. I have 100% control. Thus, this is one of those rare places where my CFO has to conform to not having power. On the flip side, I have compassion. His whole career has been under a place where he's had the... Don't, don't, don't die. So I want him to like get reconciled, even though we're in year three now with this CFO. But but I'm I want to like for please. So most people don't have that that fucking ability, right? So like if there is a team within a company that feels so passionate about something, yes. um, and the CFO is like, no, we're simply not spending the fucking money on that. How do you, and they don't have the control to necessarily say, well, actually, we are spending the money on that. How do you propose an idea to a CFO you that you? You just don't. You do not, because a CFO, she or he, is a certain animal. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna convince a tiger to start flying. So it is that binary. Mm -hmm. You can, by the way, you know how many people listen and be like, he's wrong. And then I'm gonna answer to everybody on the other side of this podcast, you're right. I'm sure you can point to a time where after four and a half months, two years of conversation, finally you were able to get something done. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much time you wasted on the other 99% of times that you tried to get something done that could not get done 100% because they would not waver? It's fucked up, man. I, I think it, it's, it's actually not fucked up. Well, it's actually kind of like Republicans and Democrats, which is like, look, everything's the best when it's in the middle. Culturally, right now in our politics, we're in the reason everyone's feeling tension is we're pulling away from each other. Mm -hmm. Same in business, CEO, CFO, right? Especially CEO, founder, visionary. Mm -hmm. She's always going to be on the offense. It's the CFO views themselves as the person that keeps her in line. Let me. Edit, and, and, editor. Editor. And 
a good CFO actually comes from a good place. They're like, wow, she's so dynamic. I'm gonna be back here making sure nothing gets too crazy mm -hmm. so that she can see her vision through. Right. I believe that, there's a lot of great CFOs. So you have, that's when a CEO and CFO work great. They've got vision and compassion for the CFO. CFO feels like he's empowering or she's empowering her vision. Mm -hmm. But that still doesn't mean that four times a year they get to a crossroads where the CEO, she thinks this is the one idea that's gonna take us to the moon and the CFO goes, fuck, this is the idea that can fuck us. And now they have friction. Right, so, that, so I think the question that comes typically is talk to me about ROI on this fucking, in, in this initiative. This is why it goes back to who actually has the leverage. Mm -hmm. I don't have that conversation. Right. I'll appease it out of respect. Right. Just like but, CFO. But I think that I, 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 it's, it's, it's really sad because I feel like the way no, things. No, it, it's not. No, it's, what, what's sad is, is that like. Let me tell you why it's not sad, Michael. You'll appreciate this. The reality is, this is why parenting is so hard. It's actually a place where the nature of having a child leads to two cooks in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. But in reality, I'm sure if everybody takes a step back right now, one of the parents is still the 1A parent decision maker. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? That's how businesses are. Are you the 1A in your house? I am not. I am not either. <laughs> uh, but I'm the 1A in my business? Yeah. And that's it. Like, there is no co, there is no partnership. Decisions are only made when somebody makes a decision. But, but can I also, Please. Okay, so it's interesting because I was thinking. And by the way, real quick, it's a partnership, but still somebody has to make a decision. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree. I, but, but. In business partnership, you know, classically people are taught that you should find a partner that complements your skill set, right? So like you're great at fucking marketing and this person is great at fucking financials, right? Like, cause, because the marketing guy is typically not necessarily thinking about the fucking P&L. And, and the I, think, guy I think, is, I don't think it's, I, th I agree with you. I don't think it's partnering with somebody like that. I think it's hiring people. Hiring for hundred yeah. percent. That's the, that, going forward, that is, I, I, that's it. That's that, it. For, for me, it's, that's it. You know I'm what? 38. Like you say, Experience. I've got another fucking 80 years to go, right? If we're fucking doing no, this it. this is why we're gonna be unstoppable. No, really. I think the fact that our generation is having these thoughtful conversations, like, I, bro, I swear to God on everything, the Jets, my kids, you know, society, I think the biggest business I build probably gets started in my 60s. I'm just gonna be so unstoppable. Experience. I think got, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I haven't even started. I, 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 can't I, I agree. I can't believe how good I was at 25, listen, Five years in, I take a business from three to 60 million with no money. Like, I was an all-star. I'm, I'm the LeBron Kobe type. Like, 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 I'm very comfortable saying out loud right now, like, look, yes, like, I'm gonna be in the mix. Like, people are gonna conversate about me in 50 years as a real fucking player. Mm -hmm. Yet, that 26-year-old that had all that talent is a schlemiel compared to the guy sitting here right now. Experience fucking matters. And then matters. imagine 30 years from Ugh. now. All right, I got a few more of these questions that I think are important. Um, is there a, uh, these are sort of more restaurant focused. Let's go. Happy hour. Thoughts? Yes. Uh, I think it's a, it's a brand that feels old mm -hmm. and just changing the terminology and a single tweak about it could start a whole revolution. Suggestion. If you're five to 6 p.m. or whatever hours you're trying to drive, A, give it a completely different name and incentivize it in a way that isn't just predicated on better pricing. So, so potentially service, some, something about the service? Uh, create something called 72 minutes. And it's this whole thing called 72 minutes and it starts at 5 p.m. and ends at 6.12. And, and then now that we've created the container, in my ideation and brainstorming with you here right now, now we say, okay, besides good pricing, what can we do from an experience, from a programming, from a some left field other third idea that really drives people running out of their fucking office to be in this 72 minutes? Mm -hmm. I like 72 minutes, Thank that's you, a good one. Um, digital marketing and restaurant space. Outside of traditional marketing, like old school fucking TV commercials that nobody in the restaurant business at my level has any, can even fucking begin and would never want to do today anyway, outside of the Super Bowl, like you said. Content at scale. Content at scale. So like, talk to me about that. Both. Like so let's talk about a trendy place because you come from that kind of world, like really being hip and smart about it. Not just how good the scene looks. That is the one dimensional move that everybody makes. Look how cool it is mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. Also, so that's your first Instagram post, but your second one is a two minute, 19 second Instagram TV of somebody making 
the shrimp cocktail and we get to know that Juan is here. Like, who is Juan back there? Yeah, but I fucking, like, I, I like straight up, like, yeah. I do that. So, like, okay. but, and, and I know a lot of fucking people that do that. My question is, it's not e com. So, like, there's no click through in the restaurant world, right? Like, outside of making a reservation, which fucking 90% of the time gets canceled, what can restaurants, like, somebody's coming up, brand new, wants to launch a restaurant, young entrepreneur, actually fucking hustler, like, gets it, understands the digital space. What should they do to get butts in seats in restaurants? Either, back, to, listen, you just said to me you play basketball, and I'm saying be LeBron. I know that you fucking post on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about every fucking nuance underneath that. Mm -hmm. Let's, I don't want to leave. I'm going to give you another one for your answer, but let me say it very clearly because this is what I spent a lot of time looking at. You can absolutely drive your business if you have a proper TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, podcast, LinkedIn strategy, and you're pumping out 100 pieces of content at scale against different demographics. What restaurant in America right now is casting African-American actors to be in the content of how good the nightlife looks there and then running it against ads against only African-Americans within a one mile radius? Let me save you time. Goose fucking egg. So before we go over I do that, others do that, mm -hmm. first do the thing. No, 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 no real quick, but it's important because it's gonna help people mm -hmm, listening. Mm -hmm. First that, number two, and this is it. Either do the thing that's current completely best or break the rules. Let me give you an example. I've been thinking about starting a restaurant called Subscription, which is exactly what it is. You have to pay a subscription fee with a heavy cancellation fee that drives guaranteed revenue for mm -hmm. me so I can staff against it, and you decide if you're gonna and show- And you just come and eat for, you, you pay a monthly yep. fee and then you just come and yep. eat whatever you want. Yep. Everything's, everything's fucking, there's no and transactions in the And I've been restaurant. playing with names, like I called it Subscription 24, which means you get to go there twice a month. Like, it's a good it's fucking, fucking idea. Smart. Thank you. People have been doing it in the coffee space. So Bro, there's like a subscription so model in coffee. You, like this is, and by the way, between 72 and subscription 24, in this podcast, you've just uncovered an insight that only I in the last year or two have realized about myself because of my team, which is I have never given credit to my own self on how creative I am within business. Mm -hmm. And that's why mm -hmm. I innovated. In hindsight, it makes sense. But like, think about the two things I just, by the way, I just ideating them. Like I say, I've been thinking about, that, those are passing thoughts. There's never been a time that I've put to words subscription 24. I just know that breaking the framework is how you win that game. Like if I, here's what I'm good at. If I had heard, well, I real quick, let me finish this talk because mm -hmm. it's gonna, I really want to get it out. If I, I, this is what I always do. If I saw on Twitter, or if you or Aton or Eugene or Noah texted me and said, hey, have you heard about subscription 24? I would be like, I would do what you did because you're smart. Fuck, that's smart. That's how I try to come up with ideas. Mm -hmm. By the way, people love fucking new shit. Do you know how many people love, I mean like somebody's gonna go and execute this idea right now that's listening, which makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, but you know what the fucked up Please. part about that idea is? You're fucking, at, you're at a ceiling, right? Like you, like you, I no, mean, is there a subscription 20, there's so, no, so there's not. a subscription, can they spend more money when they're there? Like is there, is there like, is there tiers for it? How about this? You're not an, what if it's so perfect that you just have 8,000 locations globally? Like, there's never a way to like, you can also change the pricing. You can put in the word like that. We will always give our subscription price a 12 month preview to a new pricing structure. To your point, we can ideate and say the food's locked, alcohol isn't, that's where all the upside is anyway. I think that's like, that You point. know, like you could go in perpetuity on this. We're four, minu we're four minutes into brainstorming this idea. <laughs> um. Partnerships, I think, are the hardest fucking thing on the planet. Like the hardest Couldn't fucking thing more. on the planet. Couldn't agree more. So it's not human based. So do you? Do you? Are you? When you say that, because you said that on our on, on the podcast as well, is there partners or no partners? No partners. Period. No partners. Period. No partners. Ever. Ever. Meanwhile, okay. I've only had partners. Like mm -hmm. so, like you know, now I've had family members. If you want extreme happiness as a purebred entrepreneur. It's all about employees mm -hmm. and incentivizing the fuck out of them. Nice. Because you're an artist. And as an artist, you want to write your song. The end. Yeah. We need to understand that entrepreneurs are artists. You want, Pablo Picasso didn't want to co-paint. Well, this is, so this is, the, so, so the point that I was trying to make earlier like was. I that one, by the way. <laughs> I'm, no, really, that was a good one. That's a very good one. Pablo Picasso didn't want to co-paint. I'm married to my wife a long fucking time. Yes. We, we're together 15 years. We're married almost 13 years. And it's, a, it's an incredibly awesome, healthy relationship. We happen to think very much alike. 
If That's we great. did not think a lot alike, it probably wouldn't work out. You also have your outlets where you guys get to be the alpha within your framework. Well, she fucking runs the show. That's yeah. just the straight up truth, and I'm cool with that. And she doesn't call you to tell you how to run your business. She doesn't tell me how to run my business. She would like to see me a little bit more, but that's, that's like, that's a whole nother that's, different that's, that's thing. But, thing. But the reason you guys are fulfilled is you get to be a non-partner in your craft. Mm -hmm. And then you come together and be partners in your relationship. But the one thing that I think is interesting in business, because it's very fucking similar to a marriage, like very, very similar in terms of the amount of time you spend yeah, together, yeah, yeah. the decisions tons, that you have to tons, make together. Tons. So in business, they tell you to find somebody who thinks totally fucking different. No, like they, I think- they, but, don't, they, they don't, they do. And then the book comes out three years later and it says, find somebody who thinks exactly like you. You just hear that part because you know it's wrong mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm sure right now somebody's banging on the steering wheel saying these two fucking morons, I have had a 37 year successful partnership with Barry and these two <laughs> fucking idiots don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You're right, this is all self-awareness, it's all contextual, and it comes down to that. You, th this all starts with being self-aware. You know how many people are awesome partners because they love being a 1B and they want the 1A? AJ was a great partner to me. He knew I wanted the limelight. I wanted the say. There's a lot of different versions. Yeah. I'm a great partner too. I didn't give a fuck about the money, nor do I still, as much as having the say in the limelight. I'm doing it for the craft. I'm doing it for the Hall of Fame. I'm not doing it for the money, which is why I don't have anywhere close to as much money as I've actually earned. Do you think that doing it for the money that is there any long term fucking is there a light is there a, is there a shelf life for doing it for the money though yeah i hate that game I, uh, bro but is there a shelf life for honestly it? i don't know everybody's different my it's unbelievable how vulnerable how I many think. athletes do you think do it for the money a lot because athletes are a little bit interesting to me a lot of athletes it's their number one out financially in comparison to alternatives mm -hmm. do you know how many people don't realize how many athletes hate being an athlete you, were, you, you said that the other day. I did. So what, 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 is, that, what is that like? What is that conversation like? like it's they, interesting. I'm, this is why I love Vayner Sports. We're, you know, we're, I'm thoughtful. I love this shit, right? I like being a psychologist. So like, it's really fun. Like, they know that this was the way to make $11 million, and they're also smart. A lot of the athletes like hearing what I'm saying right now because they're like, right, Gary's right. At 34, I'll be done with this. I'll have 13 in the bank, and then I can go be an artist, a mm -hmm. teacher. So it's kind of cool. Like I think the modern day athlete is far more thoughtful than a lot of people think. I will tell you, one of the most misbranded things in our current pop culture society is athletes. They are dramatically better guys and gals than people give them credit for. They're dramatically more thoughtful, but people want to go into the drugs, beating the girl, like the well, headline. That's just fucking life, right? But like they, that's like but, unfortunate but ready, human condition. But ready? That's the reverse of how we look at Wall Street. Today, Wall Street will do far more worse human things than athletes. That is not the perception in mainstream American culture. You don't think so? No, today? I do not. Today? No, do not. no, even today. Entertainment? I'm talking real shit. I'm talking beating mm -hmm. women. I'm talking rape. I'm talking, no, I do not believe that. I believe they think that they're bros and bad fucking guys that just care about money and they have hookers and coke, but, but truly like, Going to jail, like, like, like dark. Aaron Hernandez. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. No, I don't believe that's a perception. Yeah. I, I think mean, athletes are grossly. It's. I'm blown away. You know, we're recruiting these, and we're recruiting these kids when they're 20. So think about how much of a knucklehead you are, right? And it just. Blo I'm telling you, 99 out of 100 of these kids are great fucking kids. I. I mean, I. I like. I would love nothing more than to sit down with Saquon Barkley and fucking. Well, he's obvious. No, no, he's obviously he, awesome. He, he's an amazing kid. I'm actually talking like at scale. Mm -hmm. Forget Just like about, the, you know, the masses. Yeah, because that's how I look at it now. Like right. I know I have a good read on 300. Like the judgment, the judgment on athletes after a fucking post game interview. Correct. Or listen, what about appearance? I mean, let's call it what it is. Mm -hmm. Just you know, overlaying America's racial issues, overlaying the fact that these kids are swaggy and they're always going to be trendy with their clothes, which inherently seems not conservative, which is fear based. Like you know, slang, all of it. What did you think about the Giants passing, passing on Haskins? Uh, I thought, I personally- Did you think they were gonna, they were gonna pick Haskins? So I, this is for, I have to be very transparent now. We recruited very heavily Daniel Jones before he was a major prospect. Mm -hmm. Daniel, I asked you that on, on Daniel, Twitter. <laughs> Daniel Jones sat in VaynerMedia's office 
We were on it. Before he was a major prospect, we were on it. Big shout out to Brian McLaughlin on our team. On it. We spoke to him, we, we were like, this is the guy. So I actually think he's a better quarterback than Dwayne, mm-hmm. and I think Dwayne's a nice athlete, and like, but I just think Daniel's gonna be a better NFL quarterback. So when he gets picked, Giant fans freak out, I get text, I reply to all of them, we missed out on this kid by a hair, I wanted him super bad. Like we literally What did you think though, did you, were, were you like, Giants thought, are gonna pick Jones? I thought Daniel Jones should've went number one in this NFL draft. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. What did you think about Giants picking Barkley over Darnold two years ago? I thought that ago? was a mistake. You did? And I still do. Really? Yes, I do. Fuck. I could be wrong. And I think I right, mean, right, right now, Running right backs now, don't win Super Bowls. Ru- running, Quarterbacks do. Listen, Are you a, stoked about a, Darnold? Stoked. Couple things on this one. Barkley's a big time running back. Not just a running back. Let's could be the best that. ever. Number two. Right now, Darnold, between Mono and the way the Jets are playing, everybody who's listening is like, this guy's homering it. They don't realize that I've not liked a single Jets quarterback besides one I was super wrong about, Kellen Clemens, years ago. So, where I'm at, there's no, you know there's no way I'm doing anything with that. I won't even touch that. Okay, you're wearing it, good. Um, so, <laughs> this is my only revenge I gotta get out of here because I'm running, but I will say this, I'm excited to clip this in 12 years and post it on whatever the Instagram of the day is because I think, look, he could get injured because that's sports, I really think Darnold is a top tier quarterback. Right now we have an atrocious offensive line situation. By the way, it's the same reason I think Daniel Jones is a top tier quarterback. Like it's crazy to me. This is a real fun story. Vayner Sports had a final meeting. I was in Sam Darnold, this is actually a true story. I haven't said this very often, but I want to give you some scoops because I want your podcast to blow mm-hmm. up. I was in Sam Darnold's living room with his parents pitching Vayner Sports. We got to the final meeting, it was super cool. We were a small company, but using my leverage, we got mm-hmm. in the mix. I said, Sam, if I had the ability to pr- make the future happen, and I had the choice of you signing with Vayner Sports and going number one overall to the Browns, and, le- and then I said this, and let's be very clear here, you signing with Vayner Sports right now for our business would transcend our business. It would put us on the map in a way that nothing else could. Mm-hmm. Or you don't sign with us. You go with CAA, which is where I thought he was gonna go and where he did go. And you go third to the Jets, I would have the second thing happen. Of course he did. And that's and that's who that's I think incredible. that's who I think he is. That's how much I care about the Jets and uh, and that's what's happened and I'm pumped because I like adversity. So I like that everyone's taking a shit on us. Ghosts, mono, we suck. The kid up here is a fucking beast. He's a quiet kid. He's not Baker, mm-hmm. right? He's not going to be that guy. I couldn't believe more in his psyche and his actual physical ability. Now it's about building an offensive line, getting some wins. What do you, I mean, what do you, what do you think? Four years? Yeah, exactly. Listen, I actually think both of them in a weird way, and I hate to say this because I hate giving Giant fans credit, but like Eli had a big time career. Oh yeah. And I actually think it's super weird that both Sam and Daniel remind me a lot of Eli. Like just cerebral, like just like. When Jones, when Jones played his first starting game, Tampa, was that Tampa? Yeah. Number eight jersey, blue Giants jersey, was the number one selling jersey on NFL yeah, of course. shop. Makes sense. It was I, I I that that day for me, watching him start that game and win that game, yeah. was probably one of the best days I can yeah, recall because in you the start, last. You start, of course, because you start going into Oh my God. Well, there's hope. We have 13 years of this. There's hope. Yeah, of course. Oh, and, listen. He's, and he's a pedigree. Bro, he is, I, listen, I'm just, I don't know what else to tell you. We recruited him before his last year in college. We completely believed, we completely believed, we thought he was the best quarterback in that draft. I still believe that to be true. And I was pissed that the Giants took him. Gary. Thank you. You're the man. Thank you, brother. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. I gotta go, I'm super coming. late, I'm out of here.